Alrighty guys, um, this is just to show you guys the bits and pieces you need to build this uh, little hens mini spinnies. Okay, the first thing you're going to need is a stainless steel safety pin. Um, guys, the stainless steel ones are a little bit more difficult to find than the regular safety pins. So you could use a regular safety pin. Um, the only difference being is that it would probably end up rusting after a couple of weeks and especially in the salt water. Um, but I mainly made these ones uh, for Redfin, which is in a little freshwater creek down the road from my joint. So anyway, that's the safety pin. Next part you're going to need there, guys, is a jig head. Um, any type of jig head, doesn't really matter. But if you can get a jig head that's got the little neck on it there, um, you'll tend to find that that'll be a lot better because it'll hold the uh, feathering in place. Third thing you're going to need is a little swivel, guys, small as you can get. Um, weight is a factor here. You need to try and make the weight as light as you possibly can on this, um, just so it holds up the uh, little spinner prop. Um, next thing you also need there, guys, is a little bit of tin. Um, I just used a little bit of tin from uh, a actual Christmas biscuit tin that we got. And um, I'm going to try this colour here now, because all my other spinners are silver, so I thought I'd try something a little bit different. Uh, next thing you're going to need, guys, is a little bit of cotton. All right, uh, any sort of cotton, doesn't really matter as long as it's sort of a small bit of cotton. Um, you, you should be right from there. And probably the last thing you need, if you really want it, you don't, I suppose, have to put this colour on. You can you can feather with whatever you want, but you're going to need the feathering. Get off my fingers, feathers. Um, you're going to need your feathering for your trebles. I mean, for your uh, jig head. Alrighty, guys, um, on to the next bit. I'll show you what tools you're going to need. Alright guys, moving on to the tools we're going to need to make this little lure here. First of all, you're going to need to get yourself a nice little pair of needle nose pliers. Um, this is just one of the little little small pairs there guys, um, you get from most of your fishing shops and stuff like that. Um, you're going to want to get a needle nose with the sort of smallest tip that you possibly can um, because when you're doing your bends like this you're going to want the wire to wrap around there and um, get you the smallest little loops that you possibly can. Second thing you're going to need is a knife or a dart or a, some sort of punch that's going to punch a little hole in some tin for you there guys. Um, third, a good pair of sturdy scissors. Now um, you can use tin snips for this guys. I prefer scissors because you can kind of get a better more accurate cut from a pair of scissors. Um, next you're going to need a pair of teaspoons. You're going to ask in a little while why I need a pair of teaspoons. Well I assure you the next segment I will show you immediately. Um, that's about all you need there guys. You also sometimes uh, you can use a lighter for heating up a little bit of wax and stuff like that and also heating the end of the stainless uh, safety pins to uh, soften them up for bending a little bit. Alright on to the next segment. Alrighty guys, now we're on to the fun part, the actual building of the lure. First thing you're going to want to do is get your little bit of tin, um, like this, and you're going to want to mark it out with the, uh, with the style of spoon that you want there. You're going to want to get your pair of scissors. This is where I was saying the uh, scissors come into play over the tin snips, um, because you can follow the line more accurately and therefore make a uh, more accurately weighing spinner. Alright, so that's one side there done, and we'll just cut out the second side here, guys. Alright, the second side's always a little bit harder than the first because you haven't got as much material to hold on to. But there you go, that's it. Um, that's the little blade that I'm making today, guys. That's sort of like a fairly fast little spinning blade. Um, you can use many different types of uh, sort of spoon blades as well. Um, you know, I've got this one here, which is a nice little round spoon blade. Um, you can also make little prop blades, um, which is this one here, guys. It's basically just a triangle um, with a uh, slit cut in the middle there, and one side pulled up and one side pulled up. The only thing you do have to make sure is that you get the fold there pretty accurate on both sides, otherwise um, she'll tend to be a little bit wonky and won't, uh, won't spin properly. Anyway, moving on. This is where the uh, spoon teaspoons come into play, guys. You have got a little flat bit of metal here. You need it spoon-shaped. 
I was thinking last night, how am I going to do that to a little piece of metal? Because uh, it's going to be very hard. I'd need a little miniature uh, hammer to hammer it round. Then I saw me teaspoons. What you do, you get your little spoon like this, guys. You whack it right in the middle of the teaspoon, basically where you've got um, the biggest gap between the bit of metal and the uh, spoon itself. You get your second little teaspoon there, put it on top there, guys. Give it a good press and uh, hold down and uh, try and sort of flatten them both together. Make sure that when you're doing it, that your spoons sort of stay nice and flat and fit together really well. And the end product, when you pull that out, instead of being a little flat piece now, it is now, as you can hopefully see there, a beautiful little spoon pattern. Um, absolutely a great little way of making these guys I uh, discovered last night and there's that pattern on the back there, so the red and white and stuff, so we'll give that a go. So you want to set that aside for a few minutes guys and get rid of the teaspoons now, you don't need them. And I'll move these scissors out of the way so it doesn't look like a grim sight in the camera. Next thing you want to do, you want to get your little safety pin guys. Now I've sort of pre-loosened this so it's easier for me on camera, um, but what you do is you just get your little uh, safety pin like that, um, what I find best to do is um, get something, uh, put something down in there like a little jeweler screwdriver then you just give this a shake like this and you'll find it'll pop off like that you'll end up with a little piece of metal that looks like this you've got to always remember guys this is the sharp side here it, it, it is as sharp as anything so you've got to be really careful when you're uh, when you're bending this and stuff that you don't accidentally slip and have it stab into you because it will go right through your finger. Okay, as I said, you're going to end up with this. This is the top side where the head is. This is the bottom side where the pin is. So you're going to want to get the top side. It's already got a slight bend in it from uh, the manufacturer of the uh, pins themselves. So you're going to want to get that tip there, guys. And you're going to want to bend that around like this. And uh, what you'll end up with, guys, is a little hook. Um, on the end there like that. I'll just see if I can show you that a little bit better. So now um, that there is going to be the side that is going to fit the actual uh, the lure itself or the jig head itself and this side here is going to be for the spinner side because out of just the manufacture of safety pins the uh, the head side is always sm uh, larger than the uh, pin size side. Alright so what you're going to do is one um, this one here is going to be a vertical fold and this one here is going to be a horizontal fold so you're going to want to hold it like this guys get your pin on the side there making sure that it is level like this so you get a nice uh, even one and then just give that little bend over like this and uh, you'll end up with a oh, sorry there guys I'll just bend that a little bit more you'll end up with a nice little loop on there but the uh, main outcome and goal for this guys is that you want one that's basically flat up and down like that is and one that's sideways like that um, and the side that you want sideways is always the pin side the side that you don't want sideways is the head side alright moving on so we've got this part here made now we've got this part here made now and believe it or not we're not too far off being finished what you want to do is get your little spoon here guys now this is just something that I do myself um, because I don't like cutting my my little uh, little swivels um, so I get the knife here guys I put it on the blade on the uh, blade like that and I'll give it a couple of whacks until it goes through and makes a hole there. I'll get the knife then, put the knife on the back side um, into the little gap there and sort of try and core it out a little bit. Alright, so do that and being tin it does sort of give way pretty easily guys so just be nice and gentle when you're doing this, don't put a lot of pressure into it and I'll get that from the back side there as well like that and don't worry guys, I'm not cutting into my fingers or anything. Alright, so you'll end up with a little hole in the end there like that. Then what I do, yes I know you're probably going to freak out when I do this, is from the tip to that little hole, I make a snip. 
All right, because these are such light little blades that this metal, um, once it's bent back into place, is going to hold this in no problem whatsoever. Even if it does fall off, it's going to rust away in the water in a couple of weeks and um, there'll be no sign of it. And that's kind of a good thing about all the parts I use except for the swivel and the uh, jig head. Most of it all completely rusts away to nothing or uh, melts away to nothing as in, in the case for the uh, feathering. Alright, so you're going to get your swivel there guys after you've done this little cut there. Alright, and you separate your cut a little bit so you'll end up with it looking sort of... Oh, how can I show you that? Move your hand, get your hand out of the way, you goose. Like that, alright, and you're going to get your little spinner. Place your spinner in there like that. And then close him up. So you've got your swivel attached to it. Make sure it's all hanging nice and loose, guys, and it's wobbling around the place, which this one is very well, um, as you can see there, guys. All right, place that one down there and move back to your, uh, your pin there. All right, so as I said, the uh, head side, which is this side here, is going to go onto the top of the spinner there like this. And then you're just going to get your pliers and you're going to squeeze it shut like that. There we go. Beautiful. Perfect. Alright, then you're going to want to get the other side here and you're going to want to close it up just a little bit more so it's a bit more easy to manage um, when you finally do finish. Um, what you'll also find here guys is when you make this here you'll notice that this bend, this bend here um, completely goes off to this side here. Well, what you want to do is you want to make it even on this side and this side. So what I'll do is get the pliers like this, put it over the entire loop and just give it a slight bend backwards like that so you end up, as you can see, it's sort of even on both sides. Um, so you want to get your jig head guys, but essentially hold your lure like this, whack your jig head on like that it does take a little bit of effort um, because you want it nice and stiff guys so that it doesn't really uh, move too much or go too far um, out of whack because as you know with most jig heads or most uh, spinner baits the uh, actual jig head part itself is pretty stationary to the to the rest of the unit so that's pretty much finished there guys all I need to do from there is just feather the treble and uh, we'll pretty much be done um, that'll be this little lure finished so as well with that guys there this is the toe point here um, so you, that's where you're going to want to tie on to because, uh, but uh, because it's slightly different to all your regular spinner baits you can use clips or you can use your loop knots on this um, which gives it a, lot, a lot much greater uh, action so I'm going to quickly show you guys how I feather this um, which is no dramas whatsoever um, as you can see, I haven't actually closed that yet. Um, in this step here, you want to leave the jig head off um, because normally I would uh, feather the jig head before I uh, before I put it onto the lure. So I just grab myself a heap of feathers here, guys. This is going to be a bit of a messy job because it's only just to show you how I sort of do it. Like this, grab all your feathers together like that, whack them on the jig head like this and hold it around that part of the jig head hold that like that with your fingers then you want to get your cotton here now this is a bit of a I don't know if it's a good or a bad way of doing it but this is the way I was taught how to uh, feather a treble so you want to loop it over the top like that guys and then just get it and spin it and spin it and spin it until it's nice and tight hold both of them relatively tight and then just keep on turning Alright, you want to make sure your feathers stay down like this guys and they don't go up too far otherwise um, you'll end up with a hell messy looking or well, not fly but um, what would you call it a, a lure I suppose and then I just wind like heck around until I get a good purchase on the, on the, the feathering like that guys and then get your pair of scissors snip all this excess crap off all right and back to me feathering um, essentially I just grab it like this 
give it another bit of a turn there guys until it grips good and spin 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 and just keep on going like that until you've got it mostly covered I like to uh, cover all of mine up so I'm going to spend a little bit of extra time just covering the whole base up and a little tiny bit more alright there you go guys that's feathered up there alright and then what we want to do is get this bottom bit of cotton here we want to give it a half circle around your finger alright and then give it one more twist on your finger pop it over the top of the jig head the loop that you've made and pull that tight then what you're going to want to do again is the same thing but the opposite way around put it over the jig head tie it up and one more time back the opposite way around over the top tie it off nice and tight there guys cut it as close to the jig head as what you possibly can with big scissors and they won't keep cutting and there you go that's now feathered yeah I know guys I know it's a crappy looking feathering but uh, you know fish don't really look at uh, how really good or bad it is or anything they just look that it's red okay back to the oh look at the mess I've made down here back to the lure you get your piece that you've made there and this piece here and a spinner always goes to the top so you want to put your uh, put your uh, jig head in there get your pair of pliers close him up righty guys Move out the way a little jig head. Close him up like that. A bit of a bend around, make sure it's nice and straight. And there you go guys, moving all this stuff out the way. That is a uh, another little spinner I've made for you. So I hope you guys can get out and uh, make your own lures. It's a very rewarding thing to do and I tell you what, it's even more rewarding when you get a fish on them and uh, experiment and uh, try different things guys maybe you could try something like this uh, with the two spinners instead of the one spinner on there uh, maybe you could try a different pattern spinner it doesn't matter you the uh, world your oysters when oyster when you're thinking about that sort of stuff so i hope you enjoy the videos go, the video guys and i hope you uh, get out there and build a couple of your own lures and uh, yeah enjoy yourself peace out guys and shoot her out